Wasn't that a beautiful song? Wow. Wow, I could just listen to that a few times, huh? Wow, great. Thank you, Lord. That was awesome. Wow, wasn't that great? That was awesome. Okay, um, we're going to speak. We're going to draw a picture, and I'm going to speak here tonight. Is, 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 that, is that what I'm supposed to do? What? Okay, so that's... <laughs> I'm going to take... Is it hot in here? I think it's spiritual <laughs> fire burning going on here. Boy. Um, have you ever felt that you're in the midst of a big crowd of people, but you're alone? Some, some of you don't dare answer me because you're in the midst of a big group of people. <laughs> Why is that? Why does that happen? Because there's two parts in our lives that I want to use as a reference. We're going to look at Philippians and then Proverbs 25, we'll go to Proverbs 25 first. We'll draw a picture, then we'll start preaching. Then you'll just crawl out of here. If you survive the message, you just crawl out of here. Okay? No, I think it'd be out of... <laughs> I think you'll jump, leap, go dancing out of here tonight. Amen. Um... I, I sense the Holy Spirit in our ministry in the lives of the body, every the body members, and this is amazing that we gather and we are sensitive to God, and God has answered prayer, and He answers prayer, and He speaks to us personally and feel so privileged that that this is we actually know something and the Lord is with us and revealing to us that the empty tomb is really a message for the empty heart tomb is empty so you're not alone and God has words for you and he has thoughts for you, and he has love for you, and for me. So let's start with the scripture here, chapter 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. Let's say that with me. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, hide something. God hides things. And it is the glory of God. He knows what he's doing. All right. Um, picture a person. And inside part of the person. There's two, two parts to us. You find them very easily. Um, the things we talk about easily, the things that we feel, experience as people, problems, disappointments, my friendships and my communication oftentimes is on the surface. Hey, how you doing? We used to say that in Europe to people. Hey, how you doing? And they're ready to give a long explanation. You walk away. Hey, hi. Hey, how you doing? You just keep walking. And they're standing there. Like, do you want to know how I am doing or not? And I explained to them sometimes, though I agreed with them and I understood what they were saying, but we say it as a greeting often. How are you doing? God also has, we can say that God 
is God through and through. But actually, when it comes to the things of God and the creation of God, this we could say is the creation of God, he has concealed things. Things are hidden. God does not show his hand. He does not show always what he's doing. When it comes to suffering, we ask why, and we don't hear any answer sometimes. When Jesus was raised from the dead, where did he go? They didn't see him go anywhere. They saw the empty tomb. But it's to the glory of God to conceal a thing. He hides things. And with us, too, there are things that are hidden amongst us that are hidden by God and that God wants to reveal to us things. The second part of the verse is this, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Could you say that with me? But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Who is the king? God is a king, he's the king of kings, and then he made us kings. And it is our honor to search out a matter and to find out what has been hidden. Because there are things that are hidden in this world that God in his wisdom has hidden them. Jesus Christ was a good example. Who does the world say I am? You are Elijah, Jeremiah, some prophet. But who do you say I am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you. But my Father in heaven has showed that to you. In your life, you are wanting somebody to talk to you and to speak to you in your heart very personally, with love. We are hungry for that. And oftentimes in our relationships, this happens, I mean, and not, not, what we're rejoicing in tonight is that it is not happening, actually. What we're rejoicing in it tonight is that there is the deep calls to the deep. And you kind of sense in your heart that there's something going on and it's going beyond this, this service, and it's going and it's touching me. And nobody knows that I have a problem in my life the way that I know I have a problem, and I believe that God knows that I have this. And I also know that the people around me do not really know what it is that I'm going through in my life. But then as I am in fellowship with them and they are, they are looking at me and they are taking some time. And I even feel sometimes in our communication with each other and we're taking some time. And that the man that is, or the man or the woman that is ministering to me, they are there looking at me and they have a sense in their heart of a purpose for my life. They care about me. They're looking at me prayerfully. They're looking at me with love in their own heart because they are spirit-filled people. And when spirit-filled people have a sense in their own life, their, their life also on the external here, externally we know what life is. And by the way, the life that we live is not the absence of external difficulty. It is the presence of God in the midst of that. When the Jews left Egypt, they could have said, oh, wow, what a piece of cake, man. It, wow, God did it. And then after a couple of days, they that was, huh? Wow, I'm hungry, thirsty. Where is God? Moses knew where God was. And when he spoke and he ministered, there was the authority of ministry 
But oftentimes, and this is what is happening, and, and I know you know this, but, but I, I, it's so good to say it, and it's in my heart today, um, that we cut this off. We stop what it is that I need somehow. We cut it off. We, we, we are um, world, uh, earthly minded. We're looking for the solution to my problem when maybe God wants to show me what has been concealed. But what kings are looking for is the reality of Christ in my life. What kings are looking for, and we are kings and priests, but what we are looking for is the real pay dirt. To hit the vein in the land, like Job 28. Hitting pay dirt, like the the golden vein, the silver vein that runs in the mountain. And once you hit that vein and you follow that vein, it, it's like finding wisdom. And Jesus said, when you have found wisdom, your expectation will not be cut off. Proverbs 24, 14. You're actually partaking of something that is growing and is increasing. It's in the body and it's through death. But we're not always there and we're always, we do have our problems, our challenges, our pain and our trouble. But we come here because I am anticipating that somebody, by the grace of God, through the Holy Spirit, is going to speak to my heart and edify me in my new man and who I really am in Jesus Christ. And maybe my problem will not be answered this or way or that way. Listen to this. How about a man has a problem with pornography? You can talk to him and say, stop it. That's good advice. Stop it. But there is something else, too. God has hidden it, but it is revealed, and he will make it known. And what it is, is right here inside, there is this amazing capacity for desire for God. Pornography is not a problem when you have found a hunger and a desire for God. When the desire of God is so great, then there is no sin that is in any competition. I mean, theologically there is in one sense, but passionately, really, it is a piece of cake. The reason why many men of God and women of God through history do not live in in those problems of sins and addictions is because their passion and their desire and the way they have learned to live and talk and listen is based on finished work, edification, divine purpose, and an understanding that he and she and him and they, they care about me. And I'm connected to God and to God's people and a divine purpose, and it is fueling a passion in my heart. It's like, wow. Say it again. Pastor, say it again. Pastor, I think it's, I'm getting. Say it again. And what is happening is like we're cutting beyond the surface man, Tom, Debbie, Nancy, Jim, Eddie, Phil. We're cutting beyond, you know, the economics, the politics, the weakness, the strength, the addiction, the problem, the background, the, the trouble, the, the troubled marriage, the difficulty, or whatever it is. There is a cutting through of, like, life as maybe you know it. And there is an edification in the inner man, and there's a deep rejoicing. Because when these people look at you and they talk to you, and you sense that there is love and that there is purpose for you in your life. And there is also prayer in that communication. There is a prayer. You don't hear the prayer, but the per people, the person that is ministering to you has a definite desire for your growth and edification. Imagine if conversations around the world today were spirit-filled. Imagine if all believers were touching the green that was inside believers, and that believers were being passionately touched and edified. 
And there was something going on and it was just pure godly edification and finished work doctrine and teaching and in practical application you just say, wow, man, I don't know what it is, but I feel I've got a future. I don't know what it is, but I know that God has a plan. I do not know what it is, but I know that these people care about me. That I, I don't know what it is, but I believe that there's something that's going on that has been hidden but is now being manifested by God, and kings are searching it out. We're putting our nose in the book. We're, we're on our knees. We're walking in the Spirit. We pay a price. We say no to the flesh, to the noise of the world, the world spirit, the attitude of the world, the arrogance of the world, and the way of the world. And we're saying, let us walk carefully. Read, read this verse with me. Verse 3, the heaven for heights and the earth for depth and the heart of kings is unsearchable. Do you think if you sat with Jesus at the Last Supper that you would say, wow? You'd say to him, wow, when he touched you with his words. You think when you follow Jesus around in Israel, you know, in the Sea of Galilee, wherever he went, whatever he was saying, it was like, wow. Man, wow, what's going on here? The heart of kings is unsearchable. But we can say that about us, too. My heart is unsearchable. Our hearts are unsearchable. And the big question in our lives, who can touch my heart? The big question in life generally is like, who is on the inside of me? When I'm all alone in New York City, walking in a huge sea of people, who can touch me? Can the newspapers, can the professor at the universe, can the bank, can the banker, can the lawyer, can the dentist, can the doctor, he can touch my teeth and my kidneys. The psychologist, the psychiatrist, who can touch me? And the answer is tonight, really, I'm telling you, and I know you know it, guys, it's going on in our lives. And if it doesn't happen to you, and you're lonely, and you're hungry, and you're thirsty. Good news for you, Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. It doesn't say after an answer to my problems, but hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. The Holy Spirit will fill us. We'll be edified. And I think our problems are somehow solved, some of them. Some of them are solved by the newly given wisdom that comes into your heart and the new desire and passion that comes into your life. And you say the love of God is amazing. That's the greatest thing that, that is going on in the world today. It is the love of God. And listen, when brethren love brethren, then you take eyeball to eyeball in a conversation with your sister or your brother and you are loving them in your heart and you're thinking that they have a future. They are made in the image of God. It is a sacred thing that my sister and my brother is here with me in, in, in life. And, and maybe God will do, look at what, Read it with me. Verse 4. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. <clears throat> There's a purification. And you'll notice it will happen in your heart. And that's why I think reading. I don't know how many people read here. And I know that is something some people do, some people do not. And the time and the patience of reading. Have you ever read a book and fallen asleep? Have you read pages and not know what you've read? Isn't it a discipline? But have you ever read something that caught, lit your heart on fire? Have you read a Charles Spurgeon sermon? Have you read a Watchman Nee devotion, uh, book, a Pastor Stevens devotional book? Have you read? Are you feeding your soul? Have you listened to video, audio, video on the Internet? Download all those thousands of messages. Have you been listening, reading, and paying attention? And then when you are with brothers and sisters, do you realize that somebody there is hurting? Because they have life, life, our lives can sometimes hurt us. They might lie down, we might lie down in bed at night and feel alone. 
and say, does somebody love me? We counter it with the understanding that, no, no, we know that God loves us. We know our sisters and brothers love us. And we pray for that, that beautiful, precious word of counsel and advice that reaches down deep into my heart and says, hello, here I am. And I am not hiding this from you, but I, God is saying, I want you to know that I love you with an amazing love, that the tomb is empty, and that empty tomb is for your empty heart. And I am the God that made it possible that I could live in you. I am the God that made it possible for this book to explode in your heart. No, not explode, but like dew from heaven, gently fall upon a broken and bruised reed. A broken life, a life out of sorts, a life that's out of joint, a life that is in trouble, a life that is in prison, a life that is on the bench, a life that is uh, in deception, a life of hypocrisy and emptiness. We were talking the other night about sometimes religious people, they, they build walls and they give the impression of righteousness. You know, I don't sin. I'm not sinning. I don't sin. They build a wall. And then people have walls and it's righteous walls of righteousness that is self-righteousness. And when you go to the church, does anybody touch you? When you go, go to the church, is there any activity? Is there any life from inside? Or is it just walls, walls, walls? We know how it can be that way even, you know. But this is... Uh, this is... what we've learned. That if the Holy Spirit in our hearts the Bible and faith in the Bible we live and it's Christ Christ is in us and then when we're together with others that live that way also we say I, I, have, I have sinned I have sinned but glory be to God I'm not talking about it but I don't deny it that I have sinned in attitude in action in words I'm a sinner I'm a sinner and much more than perhaps we realize but our confession is that the sin that we know of, we confess to God and He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That means that which I know I have done that I confess and that which I do not know about that is also taken care of. So now we walk in the light. And out of our belly comes a flow of river, living water and we also care about the invisible. I mean, in our lives we have found the joy of our faith and we know it is in every single one of our brothers and sisters and they need that to be cultivated they need it to be touched they need it to be roused incited ignited they need it to be just kind of uh, uh, massaged and caressed and nurtured and, and brought along and say, oh, no, 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 you're not alone. You are alone. You are in the very presence of God. And also God's got your number and he knows who you are and he knows what you're dealing with and he knows how to handle you and I with love and speak the truth to us in love. There's a few verses here. Verse 11. <clears throat> a word fitly spoken. Job 6, 25, it says, How forcible are right words. Have you ever noticed that? When you get right words, like the right words, they can be even two or three. But how forcible they are. Those words that happened Monday night in our seven footsteps, one of our new brothers, he, he got it, he, and he went out, he, uh, he went out, he, he, he was touched by it, and he got it. And he took it home. I said, you, there are messages that you will hear that you can build your life on. And you build your life on them and they never change. And you build your life on them and you grow and you will find. And, they, they, and he, you know, this, is, this happens. A word fitly spoken, like apples of gold and pictures of silver. Verse 12. As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover. 
upon an obedient ear. <clears throat> Maybe we have ears, ear, earrings on here tonight. Golden earrings. Reproof on obedient ears. I hear the doctrine of the truth. I hear it. I receive it. And there it is. It's beautiful. Verse uh, 15. By long forbearing is a prince persuaded, and a soft tongue breaks the bone. By long forbearing. Okay, go to our diagram here for a second. Here's a person. And they're not persuaded. They're not persuaded. They, they've heard a lot of words that's touched the outside. It's inventions. It's, it's discussion. Many, many words. A lot of talking. A lot of ideas. Maybe a lot of books. A lot of, maybe. Maybe a lot of movies, uh, activities, social activity, interactions, and so on. But then where is it? Where is it? Where is what I am looking for? Where is Jesus Christ? Where is God in my life? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Maybe it's at that church down the street. But there's long forbearing. And I sit there. We had a person in one of our foreign countries, this woman, and I'm going to finish in a minute, but I want to tell this story. This woman came in to the back at the end of the song service and she sat there. Before the meeting end, ended, she left. And she did this for a couple of years. And I said to the, I said to some people, I said, do you, anybody know who that, that girl is that comes in and leaves? And they said, no, we, you know, we don't know who she is. But she was listening to the message and leaving. By long forbearing, by long for forbearing, we become convinced. Not by force, but by our patience, by our prayer, by our love, by our listening, by our understanding. People realize that God is speaking to me. And that God is real and that God reveals. And that he hides and he reveals. He hides things and he reveals them. And somebody could be sitting in a church like this and there's something hidden and they never find it. And there are other people, there's something that is hidden and they find it. They find the reproof and it's on their ear like an earring, like a beautiful, beautiful picture. Apples of gold and pictures of silver. There's something going on and the hearts of kings are unsearchable. And you cannot go to the depths of a human being's heart. But God can, and that's body life. Body life is that somehow we're all very normal and very average and very normal people just like everybody. But body life is when we are touching that part of us that is from the empty tomb. That is not the empty tomb, but from the reality of what the empty tomb means. The person raised up from the dead to give us an entirely new life, even in the midst of a lot of trouble of cancer and disease and unbelief and problems and marriages and kids and life as we know it. But if we say, okay, yeah, Lord, ooh, ow, ah, I don't like it. It doesn't. And But this chapter 25, it's interesting if you read it, it's about surface things and then the deep things. Like the surface things, like faithfulness. I mean, um, um, well, I want to finish, but i got to explain myself now. Look at verse 20, and we'll finish. As he takes away a garment of cold weather and has vinegar upon night, or so is he that sings songs to a heavy heart. Somebody's singing songs to a heavy heart. It's not ministering to them. It's not. It's even worse. It's irritating them. Yeah, song. And it turned on the radio. Come on, it's time to come on. It's time to have a good time. And the heavy heart says, "No, turn it off." 
It's not helping me. It's not touching me. Who could touch me? Who understands me? Who can heal me? Who can speak to me? And we're saying nobody really except the living God. The tomb is empty so your heart could be full. And you would not be a fool, like foolish people, like, I like this definition. Foolish person says, you know what, I'm going to have a new life, I'm going to move to Africa. They move to Africa, they have a lot of money, they live in Africa, really nice beaches and everything. They live in Africa They're for a couple of years and they go, you know what, not working. I'm going to move to India. So they move to India, they're there for a couple of years, living in a great life and so on. And that country and so on. It's not, not touching them. They say, my problem is I need to live in China. So they move to China and they do the same thing. And they never come. It never, they never discover what God has hidden. He hid from them a satisfying life. He hid from them joy unspeakable. He hid from them what humility does and what passion for God. God gives a man and a woman passion, and it's hidden from the wise, the, the, the proud, the arrogant, and the superficial. And people walk around doing their thing, and the Lord is grieved, and so are we. Because that would be me, and that would be you. By His grace, it is not. We have what's called body life. You hear it around, uh, you hear we say it because it's a mystery. We don't even know. We just say the word. We all know what it is. And we know also what it is not. We say body light. We say connection. We say that man, that brother, that sister, doesn't matter who they, what they look like, their age, their color, their skin, their, their background, doesn't matter. The Spirit of God is coming through them and it touching me. Hallelujah! I've got a sister and a brother and a God and my Heavenly Father. Hallelujah! I've got a life and a purpose and a direction. Hallelujah! i got my problems. But I've got God in the midst of my problems. I have Jesus Christ in an empty tomb and I have Christ as a living person inside in us. And we have a ministry that is touching us. And I'd rather dwell in the housetop, the corner of the housetop, up there, you know, the housetop in the Jewish flat house, up in the corner, even on the edge, the corner of the housetop. I'd rather be right there, precariously standing on the corner than in a wide house with a brawling woman in a wide house. And I don't know what that means except in application tonight, I think it can relate to all that exterior stuff, all that stuff that people think is so important, all that stuff right, right out there, the, bra, the, the wide space and, and all the stuff that I have in my life, including my sin. And I mentioned pornography, lying, deceitfulness, cheating, whatever it may be, all that stuff. You want to live in that wide house, that brawling, she'll kick you around the house. You'll never be satisfied. Okay? All right, so let's. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's how it is, I think. Would you pray with me, please? You're here tonight and you're saying in your heart, there's two prayers tonight. The first one for the person who isn't sure about their salvation or knows that they are not saved, they're not a believer, but they are making a decision tonight to believe and to say. In your heart to Christ, I believe in you. Jesus Christ, I believe in you. Say that, please, in your heart to him. He hears you. He loves you. cares for you. Yes, thank you. Jesus, anyone here tonight, would you raise your hand? You're asking Jesus in your heart here tonight. 
Raise your hand, anyone. On the internet, do that in Jesus' name. Say, yes, I believe. And then for all of us here, we are, we are instructed to love one another fervently. Maybe God is going to give you a personal ministry to people where you will sit and listen, pray, love, and share in wisdom naturally, spontaneously, with words fitly framed that are going to touch the lives of new believers and old believers, all of us. And we will be at it. We edify the body. That is happening. That is how we live. But we're making mention of it tonight because it's just needed to be done. And we need it in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, leading us in personal edification, guiding us in wisdom in the inner man, blessing our marriages. This is what a healthy marriage, really healthy marriages are derived from this touching each other with this type of love and purpose in our hearts. Paul loved the Philippians, loved the Corinthians, he loved the Ephesians, he loved Timothy. We love one another. We, are, we love Baku, Azerbaijan. We, we have love in our hearts because it is Christ in us. Thank you. And just across the street, the dear ladies, men and women, Teenagers, young people, the smallest one amongst us, very sacred, very special. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, 